We are here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're speaking with Seema Sokolis, who is one of two Teachers of the Year for the uh, Sacramento City Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Yes, thank you. So you are a special day uh, class teacher yes. at uh, James Marshall, Marshall Elementary, and you work with students with autism. Yes. Tell me how, how your class works and how your program works. So I have a first through third grade class and we have kind of a full spectrum in my classroom. I've got kids who are working at grade level, kids who are working at um, basic communication skills, learning to talk, learning to communicate. Um, so a lot of my classroom is based on routine and really kind of individualized instruction. So we're looking at each kid and looking at what the best fit is for each student and then kind of making a routine that works for those students. So a lot of my kids are kind of in and out of the classroom. Some of them are in the class more. Some of them are pushing into gen ed classes. Um, it just kind of really just depends on the student's needs. And so we're structured, but there's a lot of flow in the structure. So you've got students with, you know, wide ranges of ability. How do you plan for that? How do you, you're really like doing a split brain thing where you're addressing each individual need while you're dealing with a group. Um, so I have 14 lesson plans sometimes going on in my head at the same time. Um, you kind of take a big lesson and then kind of tailor it to just like a gen ed teacher would do. You've got kids that are high, kids that are low, kids that are, you know, this may not be their strong suit or, you know, it's, it's their passion. You just kind of look at the class as a whole, kind of group kids based on ability, based on needs, and then kind of just through the lesson and through the instruction, kind of tweak it as you need for each student and make it so it's at their level and at their need and understanding. So it's just something a teacher, I think it doesn't matter, special ed or gen ed, we just kind of do it. So it sounds like you're continually assessing how they're doing. Yes all the time because you see progress or you may see some uh, some lack of progress so you're constantly yeah thinking. so definitely we um, myself and the staff in the classroom we you know between breaks or check in and it's like okay how did that lesson go did the way we explain thing work well if it doesn't work then we need to kind of think okay well that didn't work how do we how do we tweak the lesson how do we re teach the lesson or even like just go back and say okay well what can we do different? Or that worked great. Now, how do we, or that was too easy. It's just got to check and modify and tweak. Um, a lot of informal assessing goes on throughout the day and a lot of just fine tuning through the day for different lessons. And a lot of that fine tuning uh, has to carry over into the house. So you must have to be in, in uh, real good sync with the families. I definitely try to make sure I'm checking in with the parents. Um, we do kind of like a daily communication log that the kids, you know, they take ownership, they fill it out. It's kind of like I did good at this or, and so like if a student's had a success, I'll write down a quick note saying, hey, you know, they did a great job in X, Y, or Z, or we're working on this right now and they're really enjoying it or they're kind of struggling. And then also it kind of falls into parent conferences and so, we're having parent conferences once or twice a year, and then we're meeting annually to review um, our students' IEPs, which, you know, sometimes parents are like, okay, yeah, you know, this is great. You know, this is just following up on what we've already been talking about. And so it's not usually a surprise come IEP time that their student can do X, Y, or Z, or we're struggling here. And so it's just, you know, making sure we're communicating throughout the year. And so when we meet annually, mm -hmm we're all on kind of the same page. So how important is that um, special education parent, special education teacher um, communication connection? You know, for some parents, they are amazing. They are super involved. They're super, how can I help? How, what can I do at home? Um, and then sometimes there's parents that struggle to kind of, how do I support my students? And sometimes those are the parents that you really need to make sure you reach out to and you talk and it's like, I can't provide these services, but here are where you can go and being able to kind of help guide parents. Because sometimes walking into a situation where your student has special needs and you're like, I don't know how to get the help. What do I do? What do we, you know, I, I like to try to be a sounding board for those parents because it's important 
that yes, I'm your student's teacher and I care about your student, but also I may not be the person with all the resources, but let me show you where to get them. So, you know, making sure we're, we're working as a team and I'm providing enough services and, in, and not necessarily in class, but information. Like I want to be the information source for my mm -hmm. parents of where to get extra help if they need it. So how important is, is uh, your professional development uh, because things are changing all the time, something new comes up, uh, maybe there's a, a syndrome or something you've never heard of that you've got to study up on. Uh, how valuable is that, that time away from the classroom when you have to study yourself? Uh, you know, I, some people really don't like professional development during class and I'm definitely one of them, but there's value in finding new information, different teaching ways. Um, there's value in continue learning and I've, I tell my students and I tell my own kids that as a grown-up you never stop learning. It's important to continue learning. I go back to school periodically to learn different things. Um, so growth is important and I try to teach my students that and, at, and model it through what I do and so you know I do take classes through you know when I have time to take an extra class about something new or if I see a professional development that's going to maybe help my class or just kind of keep up with the times because a lot of things are now technology based. Well, you know, if you fall behind on those, then you're missing out on some of the opportunities to teach innovative mm -hmm. ways to teach your students. So what inspired you to become a special education teacher? You know, that's kind of a funny story. Um, I had no intentions of being a special ed teacher. I was going to, when I first got married, I was like, I'm gonna be a high school counselor. And my mother-in-law and my father-in-law were both teachers and I was like, they're the first ones to get laid off when there's a downtime. And I was like, okay, not gonna work. I like little kids. I wanna be a kindergarten teacher. And just kind of going through school and doing different things. Um, I had worked for Sac City Unified as a class classified sub and I had left for a while and I was like, you know, I kinda wanna come back. and. I had talked to a friend, she was like, they really need special ed subs uh, for instructional aides. And I was like, I have no experience in special ed, but okay, what the heck? I like kids, let's see what happens. And I went in and I went into a class for students with moderate to severe autism, fourth through sixth grade students. So they're as big as I am. And the teacher kept going, are you gonna come back after your break? <laughs> Are you going to come back after lunch? She wasn't so sure. She wasn't so sure. Um, and, she had, and she had had people say, whoa, this is not for me, and leave midday or you know, not come back. And I kept going, yeah, I'm fine. These kids are great. Um, and it was a week assignment. And I, she, you know, the next couple of days, are you coming back? Yeah. And just getting to know the students. And by, the end of, by that Friday, I had made just just seeing little changes in the students and seeing the tiny successes were like amazing because you're like, okay, you couldn't do this on Monday and now you can do it. And I was just in awe of the determination of these students and the will to learn and thinking outside of the box. It was just amazing that at, on Friday I was going, okay, I don't wanna be a gen ed teacher anymore. I wanna be a special ed teacher. Mm -hmm. And I have never left. <laughs> So what does it mean now for you to be a teacher of the year for your school district? It's, it's such an amazing honor. It's, it's really humbling. And it's just, I, I'm kind of just in awe, like, wow. I, it's just such an honor and I have a hard time articulating how honored I am and how kind of just like overwhelmed by the experience. Like I work hard, I know I work hard, but there are so many teachers in the district that I know personally that have like, they put their heart and their soul into it. And just being able to represent those teachers and the school and the staff that I work with within our own small kind of community, it's amazing because it's, it's not me being teacher of the year, it's, it's a group effort. I have an amazing principal, I have amazing paraprofessionals in my classroom who, you know, day in, day out, we have our strengths, we work together, we're we're a family. I have the teachers next door and cross campus. Like we've become a family and it's, this is not just for me, it's for all of us of how hard we've worked to, you know, do the right thing for our students and push our students for greater achievements. Well, and because of that hard work and because of the teamwork, 
you're able to be a Teacher of the Year for the uh, Sacramento City Unified School District. Thank you for being here and talking to us. We've been speaking with uh, Seema Sokolis from Sacramento City Unified. Thank you. Thank you.